Welcome back to the Academy Award winning Emmy, seven time Emmy nominated, Potty Award winning. That's what uh, that's a podcast. That's the Oscar podcast, if you didn't know oh, that. Oh, that's fancy. Wow. The, my, my funny friends, I'm Will Abels, and I am here with oh, just the apple of my eye. <laughs> but. My sweet baby darling boy, Drew Harrison. Hi, Drew. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. I'm about to. I'm like this close to having an anxiety attack, oh, and really? I'm gonna and I'm gonna just start breaking things as soon as we <laughs> wrap this podcast up. You having <laughs> you ha- you having a morning? Uh, I'm having a freaking life. That's what I'm having. I hear you. Well, do we dare check in on how the album process is going? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. No, it's, it actually is. It is going well. It's <laughs> I was like, going, dude, checking. Yeah. No, I was like, we're leaving well. it up just, to you. Yeah, no, the road, the road stuff's just been. It's been exhausting, and no, a I couple of them just have not been worth the travel. But the set has come together, and that's all I can really ask for. So. That's the important thing. I had a, a fun travel weekend, so I don't want to rub, rub rub that in your in your face. Yeah, I don't want to hear about it. I don't care. <laughs> I hope you got a flat tire. That's what I, I hope happened. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Thank goodness. You did. Please now, what, how was your weekend? Let's hear about it was good. Weekend. I was in Fayetteville, North Carolina, uh, uh-huh. right down the street from where I grew up. And then I got to do Charlotte. And then I got to do a uh, weird winery for a bunch of old, rich, white people uh, at five o'clock. The great thing, the show was at five o'clock. I was on the couch hanging out with my wife by eight o'clock. That's a pretty nice. Great. Nice little. That's a nice little I think that's what there. I'm shooting for now. I want all of my shows to be at five o'clock from here on out you are ancient you <laughs> i gotta watch jeopardy i know you hate it so much but i gotta watch I my jeopardy i know you do uh, but that's great well, and you're with you're with one of our former um yes yes jesse you know? jones whose podcast jones. is doing even better than when he was on the show he, he is he's he told me some numbers and i hated him immediately see he's one of those guests that we should have had <laughs> yeah like like we, we we like we couldn't pay him to be on, but we should have been like, hey, can you can you give us can some you money? pay us? Can we be here? Can you sponsor <laughs> or just podcast? send us each a bottle of bourbon or something? <laughs> yeah. Sponsored yeah. by the Bourbon Showdown. Yeah, but no, uh, that'd be that'd be yeah. We are part of the Project Nerd family, so shout out to Project Nerd for having us. Um, check out all of their great content. But Will, I know you're a little bummed about the road, <laughs> but today's guest is going to brighten your day. I just got a feeling about it. I think we're going to have a great conversation because today we're going to talk about the lovely art of storytelling. Oh, I know you tell your stories. I've got some stories I mix in there. I used to run a storytelling show, so we'll we'll get into that too. Mm -hmm. Today we're joined by Allie Stewart. She is the owner of Ragana Creative, and she has a wonderful storytelling show she's been taking around Nashville called Never Sent. And I, I read the premise of the show, but I want to, I, I don't want to butcher uh, her, her premise of her show. So uh, without further ado, uh, Allie Stewart. Hey, hey, hey guys. Thanks. Hey. Howdy. Howdy. Of course. Thanks for being here. So tell us about this, uh, this storytelling show never sent that you have. Sure. Um, so the, uh, our little mission statement is, um, It's a show celebrating the conversations that we've never had. Um, So basically it's people going up to a hot mic and reading text messages, emails, and letters that they never had the guts to send. Oh, that's (laughs) spicy. I like that. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I, um, I was a documentary uh, producer for like 14 years. Um, I'm old. <laughs> okay. well, uh, what's the what's your favorite documentary you ever worked on? What was it about? What was the subject? Ooh, I got two. Okay. Um, one I was more in like the buying, producing side of the 
I don't know, the not fun side of things. Gosh, but it's the called, administrative side. Yeah, it's called Chicken People. Do you know about this documentary? No, but are go there on. People, are there oh, people it's so, bred with it's chickens? So, so fucking good. It's do you guys the have name is fantastic. Show? Yeah, best yeah, in show? love yeah. Best in Show. Yeah, so it's Best in Show, but it's real and it's about chickens. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> so chi- I've seen, I've heard the sh- they show their they have show chickens. Yes, yes, but they're not they're not fighting, right? It's not. No, 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 no. no, no. no. They're literally like a like beak to tail. Like looking at All these the chickens and just like fancy this chickens? is a prize winning chicken. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, that I gotta check that out immediately. <laughs> yeah. And then and I'm get afraid me a fancy... to say I'm from places that do that. So wow. <laughs> no, it's awesome. it's 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 absolutely so the graphics they use is gorgeous. The cinematography is way too good for this show. Yeah. And <laughs> it's, fantastic. It's, it's or for this for this film. And it's just some of the smartest, most talented directors, producers worked on it. And it's a it's about chickens and it's about, yeah. you know, competitive chickens and who's got the cutest chicken. And it's it's hilarious. It's smart. It's it's that is so good. Fantastic. Are these? I gotta know more about this. Are there? Are these? Are these chickens? Flo- are they like international chickens? It like they no. cover. They have a. They have a. They have a regal ba- bloodline though. Like oh, they do. Yeah. Like it's like the dog. Like they're like this they're came like thorbre- from prize thorbre- winning chickens. They're like like thir- like thoroughbred horses. Like like where yeah. you like, like oh this lineage. one's yes. dad yes. won the yes. Kentucky. Yes. Yeah, I can't. I can't I'm... even. Fathom they have this. paperwork. The whole shebang. Yeah. And there's a whole book that you have to follow. There's like all these rules you have to follow. These people do it their whole lives. They've been breeding these chickens to make them perfect. Like the yeah. the measurements of their feathers, like their the colors that they use. Oh, those poor chickens. Can you imagine being from a cra- a fantastic lineage bloodline and you have like you, you don't make it to the show? You know, like yeah, you, you gotta the like family. You break the family record. <laughs> yeah, you're the middle child. Yeah. Heartbreak. I want to write a movie about this stuff, about the chicken that wasn't good enough, but you wrote yeah. an anim- anyway. An, an animated chicken movie, and you're the it's chicken. It's done. I wrote make... the whole script in my head. Already. Oh, it's good. done. Yeah, yep. it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be Pixar. You're gonna yep. cry in the first yep. ten minutes. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he and, and the chicken has to find himself and like yeah. what what other he, get, he might get into I... stand up comedy for a little bit. Right. And it's about, it's not about the beauty on the outside. It's about the beauty on the inside. And the chicken has to learn about that. Oh, it's beautiful. No, <laughs> it's so, it's going to be so good. I'll help yeah. you guys. Yeah, I was about oh, to say, please, please help us produce this. I know people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So what was, what's, what's number two? What's the other? Document? Oh, oh, the, um, the second, my second favorite thing I ever worked on was called Storm the Gates. It was with, uh, Huffington Post. It was about like the surge. Yeah, it's about the surge of women who ran for our office yeah, after yeah. Donald Trump. So that was that one I got to kind of dig my teeth into a little bit more. I got to meet some of the most absolutely incredible women that were, I you know, they were just pissed. And yeah. I was just as pissed. Yeah. Yeah. And it was nice. It was nice to, uh, it, it, was, it was just the most ripe time to be working with really incredible women. That That's was awesome. great. That is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, those are my those are my two favorite ones. And I I was just I was in, you know, the documentary world for a while and it was great, but the Hollywood egos were I could I, I got to a point where I couldn't handle it anymore. I ended up living in LA. I hated it. I hated everyone oh, I worked yeah. with. Yeah. Um so I <laughs> it's I a general consensus I get from people that have spent some time out there. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, and people who like it, then yeah, it's I it's either because you're just and I was making, you know, I got to a point where I was making good money and I was I was doing well for myself, but I I couldn't handle it anymore. It, yeah, just, yeah, it wasn't yeah. a healthy lifestyle. It's it, the, but you can't I, you can't have you got to have the pro and con balance, you know. Like if yeah, you might be making money and making a good living, but what's the quality of life that you're living? Yeah, no, there wasn't there wasn't one, and yeah. I was overworked. I'm sure you can tell by like the sound of my fucking voice. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> like I still haven't got it back. Um, but you know, I took, I took what I knew in that and I wanted to bring it to, you know, I moved to Nashville and I wanted to bring what I knew in, 
interviewing and producing authentic stories that um, about things that were really kind of off format and bring it to a stage, bring it in real life. And uh, Never Sent was kind of my experiment too, because when I moved here, it was such a culture shock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coming from New York and LA. Uh, Will can probably relate to that. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. I I got here in January of 2021. And and it was so funny because Nashville was like, oh, yeah, we're like not open. And I was like, what do you consider clothes? Like, there's like people (laughs) running around everywhere. This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. When we got caught in the middle of that, when it was everything was shut down and they had the drone fly through uh, downtown and every place is just packed. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, Nashville. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah it was it, there was just and I could just I could tell that uh I, there's obviously so much talent here mm-hmm. I mean it, y- you guys know this there's a lot of incredible comedy there's a really cool comedy scene yeah. and there's obviously an incredible um you know songwriting storytelling scene um but there's so much oppression people are just they're held back but you can tell people are so also just like general personality people are kind of polite they don't really like yeah like you know when they hate you you know yeah we we let you know in certain ways okay no you do you do it's true i've learned it took me a while but now i know now i know gotta pick it up we're a little more subtle about it you know Oh, <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, this was just kind of that to see like what the show was me experimenting to see what people are kind of holding back and what they didn't say. And uh, uh, it's been my it's been my favorite thing I've ever done. I, I love it. So yeah. how did how did you uh, like the transition from, from like that media, you know, like the going from, you know, camera work and stuff like that to to a stage? feels extremely similar it feels like i don't know emotionally and socially it feels like the same thing where everyone and and nobody understands what i'm doing they're like why are you doing this you made money you did well (laughs) why would you leave it you're getting Uh, into the arts oh (laughs) you're doing it in reverse what's wrong with you i don't know (laughs) I've genuinely fallen in love. It feels like falling in love. I've fallen in love with Nashville. I love it so much. And Mm -hmm. I just fucking know what this is here right now. Mm -hmm. I know what this is. I know that this is what Brooklyn was like 10, 20 years ago. And I just know there's a lot that's about to happen. And I, you know, I'm greedy. I want to be a part of that build. I want to be a part of it. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, that's why we're here. You know, we both moved yeah. for, but to be part of this comedy scene. So mm-hmm. yeah. we, we get it completely. Um, yeah, well, what you guys are doing is really cool. I'm I'm into it. Well, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we're into what you're doing because this thanks. Man. What 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 brought a what what came about this idea? You know, like where you're like things that you haven't said to people. Yeah. Um my friend runs uh, a few film festivals, 2020 hit he reached out to me because I used to manage a queer performance group Okay. Uh, for like seven years that he came to all the time. It was, it was a lot of drag and dance hall and um, Vogue and uh, things like that. It was very, very New York, very Brooklyn. And he knew I could do events and he knew I was trying to get out of Hollywood and into more events. So he asked me to pitch him, some show ideas for his film festivals that would work, you know, on zoom. Okay. So I pitched him a few ideas and they hated all of them, except for <laughs> never said. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. What were some of the ones that got thrown on the uh, cutting room floor? Um, I wanted to do like a, um, like a stupid, how we met one, like a cute, oh. you know, a, a kind of like a, when Harry met Sally. Yeah, thing. yeah. The meet cute. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. guess no one was in that cuddly, feely <laughs> mode <laughs> early on. You know, yeah, like, it just cuts to two couples that have been like born together for like three weeks, just strangling each other. Yeah, I remember like, when we, we were happy. We each other. Yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can the see. moment I wasn't. Okay, yeah. I can see how that one broke down a little bit. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. And 
And I don't remember. Oh, uh, one had to do with lying. Okay. I don't remember what it was, but it had to do with, I don't know. I don't remember what that was. Uh, it had to do with lying. That's what and my storytelling show was about. It was lying. Oh, it really? Was, I, so I ran a show in Wilmington called. Um, uh, I thought you were joking. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, I've never seen you say something so casually. So I was like, oh, this is like a really <laughs> weird bit. It's a weird yeah. bit that Drew's doing. <laughs> No, I had a I had a storytelling show in Wilmington and it was in this basement bar and it was real dungy and it was just dive bar of dive bars and my buddy was the bartender and and it was called Did That Really Happen? And I would get four comedians to tell a story about a f- specific theme each month and three of them were telling the truth and one of them was lying and the audience had to yeah. try to figure out at the end who had the made up story. And the great yes. thing is, you know, some com- some comic stories are truly unbelievable. And some yeah, comics right. that were I would get to do the fake story would make a fairly boring is boring ish story up. And like we fooled the audience so much. It was great. And my my wife would love this show. She'd come down to it and she'd be like, don't tell me. I want to figure it out myself. I'm like, all right, I got you. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So I think that's, that's awesome. a great. I would love to bring that concept back somewhere. I just haven't. Like yeah it, it struggled yeah, a little bit one. in wilmington because of the day and time we did it but i think it's it's a fun concept well third coast is playing with storytelling ideas because they you know they want to expand and see what else is out there i really really like that idea yeah, yeah, yeah. a yeah. lot it's just it you run out of comics and stories at some point so you'd have to definitely get the storytelling community you know spoken word artists yeah. on it too you know like all creatives so like maybe i maybe that's something we can we can talk about partnering together doing something about you know yeah like, hell yeah or just real together. people yeah. yeah yeah you know real people have that that's i mean i found some of my people on craigslist oh okay well when you take oh, the like, pressure that's you take the pressure of having to be yeah. funny and you just tell a story you know like that's that's awesome but they're also fucking hilarious like right. the guy mm-hmm. one guy one guy i found didn't find i used to work with him in um in you know tv and in film and he's the he was the head of i i don't know i don't know if it's the fbi but he's like the main person you go to oh, wow. when there's a a big missing persons case he can oh, find oh, okay. that missing person okay and he, I, I always thought he was fucking hilarious whenever I would have my like conference calls with him and stuff when we were doing, and we were doing these dark, serious, like little kids dying, true crime stuff, right? And he always cracked me up. So I called him for my show and I was like, I was, I remembered he had an accent. I was like, maybe by some chance <laughs> the Southern accent is Tennessee. And he's like, I live, you know, I live in Knoxville. And I was like, oh, perfect. So he told the story about uh his obituary that he had been rewriting for the past five years over and oh, over again oh, and it that's was so funny and it was so funny it was so funny and no one had ever heard it before oh, wow. so he but it, but it was his actual obituary right yes yeah so there, there was a show in new york at qed did you ever go to qed no but i i i know of it and uh, Mike Drucker would have you write your obituary and then you would oh, read wow. your obituary that's, that's to fantastic. the audience. And it was so much. And it, the funny part was like how like how just from like writing it scra- like scratch on a piece of paper to like guys bringing up like uh, an iPad and like scrolling through and reading like their entire obituary of like something they've clearly been thinking about for a while. <laughs> it was a great show. Yeah. Oh, it's a God, great concept. Really it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that's what i mean like you i i feel like regular people that because well what's interesting too is i did documentaries and then the thing the the other thing i got jobs in over the pandemic through my company was comedy Mm -hmm. for some reason like real life documentary and comedy kind of are very parallel as far as i I don't know i think that makes sense i guess the way they're shot but I actually, I guess no. I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a funny parallel. Well, stand up, 
I guess. Yeah. Is kind of a similar, yeah. you know, real thing. Right. Um, is and if you look at things like uh my next guest needs no introduction, mm-hmm. that is a format of comedy and documentary that that kind of seamlessly goes together. Right. The way he cuts it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. So you also I have some, you also have some other events coming up that uh like you just you touched on a little bit <laughs> that uh bring the comedy and drag community together. So it would tell us tell yes. more, more about that. Yes. Oh wow. Very good transition, Drew. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> See, this is this is how Drew trick this is it drives me nuts because I have zero preparation on my end. And and Drew makes me believe that that's how we're going to run things. It's just going in and being authentic and just kind of learning together about the guest or whatever the topic is. And then he clearly spends hours prepping. He gets little notes and it's just, and I'm just sitting here looking like an idiot. No, no, no. Look, man. Here's, and he's so like, soft. I thought his microphone. He's so I know. Soft. I thought it, yeah. It's so like his man. microphone was like, oh. Anyway, we're about to move into this next topic. Uh, now, while Will's over there having a full-on meltdown, uh, let's well, just it's, transition it's like very smoothly. It's like sports has the play-by-play guy and the color commentator, man. And I, I keep the interview process going, and you provide the color commentator. I thought this is... Whatever, dude. Whatever. 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 Look, man, I wanted to take all the pressure off you. You got too much to worry about right now, okay? So I'm sorry. No, now I'm... I try to make your life easier. Just one time. All you have so to do is like, like, you just have to text me and be like, hey, by the way, I got this. That's all I you got to do. I did mean it? to send you this information. So that is on me. I apologize. Oh, well. But whatever. aren't you excited you're finding out about it? Like right now? I am. Well, I'm I'm having a great time. I just, See? I'm just pissed at you for being so professional. I want, <laughs> if something doesn't explode, <laughs> we have another guest. It did make it up. Oh, yes. Called it. This is yeah. boozy. Wow. Uh, oh, you are what, adorable. Look at, look at that face. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Gosh. She's, She's like, very fluffy. I know. She's going to jump from that wall. She's like, oh, look at the tail. <laughs> oh, yeah. She oh. doesn't have a tail. She's like, She's oh. Cute. She's like, let me show you the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Hey, baby. Just, <laughs> yeah. She I can hear I can hear Davy trying to get I can hear Davy trying to get back inside. I'm like, no, you're no, like, you're an outdoor cat ladies, now. Ladies, what's up? Huh? What? Oh yes, the other stuff that I have coming up mm-hmm. uh, is a show called "Don't Be a Drag" at Vinyl Lab. It is a comedy and drag show uh, with proceeds that go, you know, towards the fight against all the homophobia and transphobia that's going on right now. Yeah, I've <laughs> heard that. Yeah, goodness gracious, man! It's, it's like you open I've up been, your phone every yeah. other day and you get something some new bills trying to get passed or some new laws going into effect. It's ridiculous. And it's all Tennessee. And that's what's so like, cause I've been doing all these road shows and I'm not going far outside of Tennessee. I'm going to like Louisville and I'm going to, you know, last night I was in Benton, Illinois. And like, you try and talk to people about it and they're like, what's happening. It's, it's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Like I yeah. had like, <laughs> like even friends that are back home that, you know, might lean a little more the, you know, right wing or like, why are they going after drag shows, man? <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, I don't know that. everybody <laughs> loves a drag queen. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. And if you haven't Why dressed you in, of- if if you haven't, if you were, if you were, if you were the most heterosexual male and haven't dressed in full on drag, you're missing out. It is a blast. Yeah. It is. I did a comedy Ooh. show in drag, and it is the most fun thing. In the entire world. Like, I don't understand. Put drag on and then try to be mad at it. That's what I challenge all mm-hmm. these lawmakers doing this. You can't because well, you're they having did. a blast. They... <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Is yeah, all the photos yeah, are coming out of like, <laughs> like, like they, they did do it. And I just, I don't know. Yeah. I love that well, show's yeah. going around. I hope they're making a lot of money off that shirt. And Yeah. Yeah. They are. They're making a lot of money off that Dude. shirt. They mm-hmm. are. They're making... There's a couple things going around and uh, it's making a ton of money. I'm, mm. I'm trying to, uh, there's, there's a lot of us 
some of these people that are involved with the shirts and everything who are organizing right now i i'm not gonna say who 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 else is involved exactly but there might be a there might could be a march going on um what is being called a it's it it all has to do with like the localities and like how how dangerous or not dangerous this could be sure or how effective it could be or who who we could get involved so on and so forth but a drag crawl yeah oh. which is like it's i'm awful. sure that kind of explains itself it's yeah, a yeah. pub crawl across the city and everybody all the protesters and everyone involved just dresses, dresses in drag oh that's awesome that's awesome yeah. fantastic <laughs> oh man well have you done have you had have you done storytelling shows and whatnot yeah it, it was so it's so funny because like i ne- i do storytelling on stage like as a comedian like just like my yeah, yeah, jokes yeah. are mostly stories right yes but it was funny the first time i did a storytelling show and go and and then realizing like i have to tell one story for 10 minutes and having that moment of panic of like can i talk for 10 minutes and the answer is yes but yeah. uh, like when i had to go back and like <laughs> we were very story, concerned if you could cover the time <laughs> Can Will talk about himself for 10 minutes? Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and but it was, I actually remember the first one I did because it was in, uh, it was at Gotham in the downstairs room. And I, oh, I think it's called cool. the Vintage. Room. Yeah. And it was a former writer from SNL, a guy whose name was like Dave Abels or something like that, which was sort of funny. And uh, Eddie Brill, who's the former Letterman uh, opener. Cool. And and there was one other person who I think is doing okay now, but I, I don't remember their name. Um, and I remember doing the storytelling show, and for some reason, uh, oh, what is his name? John Malkovich was there, just watching Whoa. the show. Oh, okay. yeah, so and New it was York. This, it was right. the strangest night. Yeah, yeah. but it yeah. was very fun. Yeah, it was a very very fun show. I I talked about um, I talked about getting hired at uh, the Sound of Music actually. That and there was like the whole story of like. It started off like for me working at a restaurant and then just like the whole story all the way up to hugging Carrie Underwood. And yeah, it was <laughs> it's a lot of fun. That's yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah. But I really haven't done that many. That's like one of maybe four I've done ever, I think. All right. That's yeah. awesome. I mean, yeah. honest, honestly and truly, I'm I, I think storytelling is this nice like flirt with playing with different formats yeah. like what's yeah. the in between what's the in between between uh you know what's the bridge between like comedy and therapy yeah. or you know things that have to do with like or comedy and uh or a roast and um i don't know something else I, I, they're, we're all calling it like these storytelling formats, but it can really be anything. And I think also being like being in New York for so long, there were so many fucking incredible shows that I would go to like Tinder live. Oh yeah. 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 Or, um, they just read Tinder profiles. Yeah. She would, she would take people's phones, project their real Tinder profiles on a screen and then just like dive in and yeah. swipe and it, it it was so good it was so funny oh, that's and then there's there's these yeah there's these two venues called bell house and little fields you mm-hmm. know them yeah yeah and they had the best like they got sued but they had this thing called drunk ted talks uh, wait well i think it's not with sued ted talks the, what happened ted Oh, okay. Ted Talk. Oh, Ted, 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 Ted Talks. Ted, Ted oh, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, Ted. Because they use the word Ted Talks in their name. Oh, <laughs> I mean, funny. that's fair. That's, that's, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. Yeah. I love I weird know. show concepts. Whatever. I mean, you, you know I'm a fan. We, Me and Will run Stone Cold Sober, which is a very fun interact, like inebriation level comedy show. So I just, I love when. Yeah. You, <laughs> so there was a big time in Wilmington where we struggled with getting audiences at just showcases for some reason Mm -hmm. audiences weren't coming out to showcase shows so we really had a run there in wilmington where every show was kind of 
and I hate to call it that, but a, a gimmick show. Like it had another mm. way to do it. But like we had yeah. a mm-hmm. one where you had a, a shot collar on and your significant other had the, the button. So like if there was ever something you didn't they you found out they didn't like about your acts, you know, they got they you, you found out that night. Um when mm-hmm. you he told me about this. So we were in Wilmington together when he was telling, you know, and he just walked down memory lane and we were at the bar that they used to run this. Yeah. And like <laughs> to say it was a perfect fit for yeah. having someone in a shot collar, that setting was so, I was like, yeah, yeah. this bar would have, like, I'm surprised there's not someone getting, wearing a shot collar now and they're just <laughs> shot collar now. Just, they're just doing it for fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it was such a we good We definitely matched our yeah. weird shows to our venues. You know, you got to because that's I'm sure that's key for you guys, too. You got to know your venue and the show has to fit that venue. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's with what I'm doing now. I'm playing with it because I don't know. We had the perfect venue for a year and and now that's why it's at two different places, Mm -hmm. because, you know, the the show that I'm doing is funny, but it's dark, like everyone Mm -hmm cries every yeah, single yeah. time at this show emotional show uh, yeah so i don't know if it's gonna work at a place like third coast comedy yeah well the honest i we'll think see. if your audience is goes, yeah. goes with you you know because it is an intimate room yeah if you have can, that it can be nurturing yeah and, and okay for for that type of emotion it's like yeah they are very it's a good club and it's a good room to experiment with new shows and everything um but the only thing and maybe this was kind of what you're saying is like it's a very touristy club um so so it's like uh, with stone cold sober i have noticed that where like you might make a local reference or uh just a comedy reference in general and you can just see it go right over their heads and we've asked it doesn't seem like we have the same audience at all like we have a brand brand new fresh audience every month yeah and that's a very I think it's a very third coast thing is like, it's just, kind yeah. of like a, well, we found it. Let's check it out. You know, yeah. which might work for a new show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what I like about that is it's like a loophole. I can like drip a drag queen into their lives. You know, I can drip yeah, yeah. someone talking about some crazy sex thing. And one of their never sent into this, like, you know, Nancy, the tourist. Yeah. This day. Yeah, to yeah, me, I'm she, like, yes. Yeah, you want that? You. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because now it's going to be a cool thing. Now it's going to be like I went to Tennessee and saw a drag queen. <laughs> like, it's I'm like, I'm like, was it Dolly Parton? Yeah. It'll be like taboo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's okay. So that's that can lead me to the. I want to see what you guys think about this. The the show the show that is the furthest away at the end of the year that I'm going to do is called Clip tips and it's a, a modern version of the vagina monologues okay <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah it's going to be people talking about uh you know their clits and their vaginas but it's called tips because it's not just about uh it's it's about everybody who identifies as female okay. so it's about tips just as much as it is about clits <laughs> oh there you go there, and i, I, like, I, I like the word play on the name <laughs> there That's you awesome. go there. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic uh, and i talked to third coast about this and they they like they want it they're like yes 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 and i would love <laughs> nice you know sneak a nancy into that one yeah. she needs it yes she does yes that's the open it's so funny that's is like why is that so hard? yeah the like just the common nancy will always surprise you at a show where you're like they're not gonna follow along with this and then they oh. always do and you're like oh okay so this is it's always is the one that you don't yeah. think is gonna be on board comes up to you after the show and it's like i enjoyed that so much. <gasps> yeah like the the show i did last night in i was in Bent, benton illinois and where I was is like, I where know. is benton is it like it right is like over just the past the border okay. of Kentucky? Yeah, it's like just okay. past. All right. And there was this the the best audience members the whole night were this uh, older couple, like probably in their seventies, uh, gray hair. He's got like a Vietnam hat on, and I was yeah. like, I don't think they're gonna like anything the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed at everything. Like oh, she laughed fantastic. at everything, 
And it was so funny because everyone else was so tight and her laugh kind of loosened them up. We also had to kick out two drunk people, which that Ah. that helped loosen the room up a lot more. Um, (laughs) But yeah, but was it it in the middle of your set? Did they have to cut cut them out in the middle of your set? Drew, you would have been so proud of me. Oh. For how long I held it together before I threatened to shoot them with a gun. <laughs> I kept it like, together Tennessee's for changing, so... man. I kept it together for so long before I finally just made a reference uh-huh. to shooting the table. And the whole place was like, they were down for it. So it was like this. Like, I got a gun in the truck us. you like, can use, brother. No, it wasn't that bad. I would, it was part of it was a it was a joke I was doing where in the in the story on stage I'm holding a gun on in the in the joke. So yeah, it wasn't yeah, like so I just randomly was like I I'm gonna it. shoot you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was I was already like, standing. hold on, time I was out. already standing. Like, I'm gonna shoot you. No, it wasn't as bad as like it's like I swear to God I'm going to the car and this is your last night on earth. No, it wasn't uh, that bad. It was Ali, just, Ali, just to in give the you story some... I referenced to it some context on this will tried to fight an entire pool club in charleston south carolina one time so oh, when he says drew you'd be proud of me it's because we've been together when they when when angry will comes out and well i have ang- i have anger issues as well i wonder if it's a new york thing i'm uh, always trying to fight people yeah it might be <laughs> it might it might be the root of it is just you know no, no, no prouder moment than when you're performing for a hundred dollars in a bathing suit and just screaming at a pool to just after shut an up. EDM DJ that when they uh, yeah while they're all the music, on Molly yeah they stopped the music and said now we're gonna have comedy the whole club went boo three hours after we were supposed to be on stage yeah oh. thank you let's shout out to Evan Burke for setting up that magic <laughs> hey we God. still got paid though. So shout out to Evan for getting that check. <laughs> where's uh, where's Never Sent gonna be? When is it making its next round? It, yes, the so this round it's it's at like you said it's at Third Coast and uh, all people, and from after the show we gotta decide where it where its home is because it was a barber shop for a year. Like I I don't know if I said that before. Mm-mm. So we have to figure out where it's gonna stay. Did something um, happen to the barbershop and, theater? No, no, no. It, it um, it's doing well. Folks wanted to uh, rent it out for like a two or three year contract. It was just, it was just the owners, you. um, you know, the, having people come by and do yeah. shows there, and they you. wanted to have it be a little bit more organized. Yeah. Oh, so, um, and it, it's turning in. It turned into something that was a little more theater and. Um, we were, uh, you know, we were packing the house and there's only 50 seats in there. So I wanted to see if I could grow a little bit. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah. yeah. It's always fun. Yeah. That, yeah, right? totally. Yeah. Well, that'll be a nice I, jump from, I'm, uh, I'm, with third coast, you know, it's like a ne- the next level up from something like that. So it's nice to see how it does there. Yeah. And third coast is just, there's, it's, there's a few, places in town that are you know are truly safe grounds for artists to to do something a little bit naughty Mm -hmm. and that's why I'm really honored to be there Mm -hmm. and you know the fact that they're like yeah definitely let's do something here and that's I mean honestly that's what I'm trying to do I'm just trying to like I'm I'm trying to you know make friends with you make friends with them and I'm trying to just have us all gather around together so we can be powerful and cute together and <laughs> i mean and not be bad numbers you yeah. know strength the numbers. yeah, yeah. yeah. have a For little sure. more power and i'm you know yeah. i'm trying to get my the fucking people that i used to work with involved and in stuff in nashville and get some real money pumped into what we're fucking doing and yeah. oh i'm sorry we're comedians over, like, what is this money thing you're talking about <laughs> Oh, I, yeah, I could take, I could use someone pumping some money into me. I would... <laughs> right. I'm not used to this uh, idea of like money Botox. being involved, you know? Yeah. I got a, I, I will, sh- I don't want to show you who gave me this check, because, but I have a $10 check sitting right here. What? 
Yeah, someone puts out a ten dollar check. Then it costs well, more money to who? make a ten dollar check <laughs> than actual ten dollars. I feel like the paper is worth more than the actual money that I'm going to cash it for. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, it's, yeah. just, I it's mean, just tough when the, the pay is still in the 1980s. Is it? What's the minimum wage in, in Nashville? No. I think it's 14, 14, 15. Wait, what? What? I think it's not that bad. The minimum really? wage in, in Tennessee is still like seven fifty five or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I just know working for $15 an hour feels like minimum oh, wage. Oh, no, 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 no. Minimum wage is still <laughs> garbage. It's just uh, we've made, look like, I wanna I've never had it. I'm looking it up now. Minimum wage oh, in it's just like, that's is seven twenty five. dollars 7 an hour. Oh, shit. Oh my god, is it that's insane? Yeah, like I had a nice. job that paid that's... fifth the last day job I had paid fifteen dollars an hour and I worked like thirty five yeah. hours a week and I still was well yeah. in the poverty level for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Like I was yeah, the, yeah, I was doing forty plus and it would like I'd constantly have to call my landlord and be like, Hey, uh, I'll pay you next week, I guess. Like yeah. it was yeah. just crazy. You should know you yeah. should, like I agree with and could you imagine if it was half of that? You know, the seven twenty five. Oh no, no, I can't. Like, what? Well, it's funny because when you're, because when you're a kid, you just work for that, but you don't have any responsibilities. After <laughs> you know? taxes, like, that's like you're... two, three hundred dollars a week. How can anyone survive off that? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. know. Hopefully, our our favorite listener, Mr. Bernie Sanders, is paying attention <laughs> and he's going to yeah, keep he, up he his. He emails his us fight. every week. I like. Wow. I love Bernie's. Yeah, I look. I love Bernie so much, but I just I can't imagine being him because you have to just be losing your mind all the yeah. time with yeah. the people he has to deal with. Day, yeah. just like I just want to. I just want, I just want people to live. You know. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's like, got to be a frustrating job. I could never imagine being in politics because now that wow. I'm kind of blending a little bit into this, like protests and marches and doing everything that i can the, to get the friend side of as things. much drag as possible out there yeah like yeah. i i am so i am my personality has changed in the past like two just months been so angry at the thing yeah, yeah i'm yeah. so fucking pissed i'm so yeah. mad that i'm i i remind me of like that aunt that i grew up with that i was that was always like <clears throat> preaching i don't know i didn't yeah, you get I, it now. You're like, oh, think, you were just mad all yeah. the time. I get it. I get it. Yeah. 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 And I didn't, you know, I'm trying to, it, I think I, what sucks is I just think I'm getting a little bit smarter. I really miss being dumb. Yeah. See, see, I'm trying to get dumber by the day. I'm trying to just tank my. Yeah. IQ. I like living in this stupid <laughs> little world of mine. I stay yeah, right. Like yeah. I wanted to be smart at some point and didn't really do much for me. So I'm just staying right here. Yep. That's smart. I need to get back to that. Yeah. I really do. I thoroughly enjoy it. I can lie to you. It, it does. The more you know, the angrier yeah. you get. And you're like, yeah. I get yeah. 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 I don't, I, I mean, I think it's good for me to be angry for a while and work hard for a while and then just like dip back into stupid. Just, yeah. Well, you just gotta, you gotta be able to, to, and I know it's way easier said than done, you know, cause it's, it's so easy to be angry at the world and everything mm -hmm. and to have that at least have that escape at some point so like mm -hmm. shows like yours like comedy shows to at least just be like mm -hmm. let me just try not to be mad for the next hour and a half all right cool let's do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely for sure because that trips me out when people come to comedy <laughs> <laughs> well that trips me out when people come to a comedy show to get mad Right. yeah like just enjoy yeah. the bliss for a second man like granted i know there's idiots that go on stage and say dumb things and it gets your blood boiling i i get it but like the people that come yeah. and you know who i'm talking about the people that you see in the audience you're like oh he's waiting to get mad oh she's yeah, waiting is for me to say something yeah that, that is a strange factor where you just are like what why'd you come here yeah <laughs> Yeah, what are you? Because like even the drunk people last night, like they were like they were just drunk. They weren't like 
they were like they generally just like were in their own world thinking like oh we're just talking during the show but we're helping like they didn't we're they weren't helping. there to be bad people they just were just drunk you know yeah, but yeah, yeah. fortunately there was your... no one that was like mad who are your sorry. favorite people that have sorry to interrupt you hun that's okay who are your favorite people that came up to you after the show or after shows you've done my favorite your cat is judging so hard right now and it's hilarious <laughs> she wants to, to know she's like she's like what's up no, so that answer just, the question but you like ask the question and the cat was like who see who are my favorite people well, we well like on it's this a, last it's time. a pretty your bro yeah yeah, your yeah. Bro the broad, yeah I, that's yeah, who i thought of time. yeah uh, it's a broad spectrum of like like so when, uh, when i go to like a like a city like wilmington where there's a lot of bro culture they'll come up to me afterwards and they're just like dude we're doing shots freaking like loved your man and so like i like denver happened that happens a lot in denver too um so that's like the good side of it uh the bad side i would say is like so recently i had a guy come up and decide he wanted to give me some notes um... and i was like this is a 6 p.m show at a coffee shop uh <laughs> i don't need your notes no oh yeah you told me about this oh my goodness did i tell you about that yeah, yeah. and like look the guy's note, big note was like, you really need to bring more energy. And I was like, literally the median age of this audience is 65. Like I'm, 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 I'm literally engaging with their level of energy. I'm matching you know? your energy. Yeah. yeah. I hate yeah, that. Yeah. I was like, you know me, I'm, like, I get that all you? the time. Yeah. <laughs> People tell me, Drew, yeah, and I, I just have more but... energy. I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not I calmly said, thank that. you for the notes. And I crushed the Coke can I was holding. <laughs> well, look at like you channeling your anger into other things. Rascals. I'm pr- you know what? I'm proud of you. Proud of yeah. You. Thank you. I can keep you oh, and Brandon oh, oh. Gerald out of jail for the next couple of years. I think it'll be something. Can you, the two of us on the road has been a little dicey. Yeah. I can <laughs> <laughs> uh, Allie Brennan is a buddy of ours that uh, has known to have a bit of the road road uh road rage from time to time oh so. yeah yeah a little just a slight amount of road rage you should have seen him yesterday oh my god i didn't think we were gonna make it he did it again yesterday <laughs> oh, it man. wasn't as bad as the last time. he's been getting his like cold baths or whatever he does to calm down <laughs> It was over. He was like, I, I just see his face get red, and he just, he just grips the t- the steering wheel a little tighter. <laughs> have you? God, here it is. Poor guy can't Have you guys heard himself. of the rage? Have we uh, heard have of you what? Heard of the rage rooms? Yes. No. What's I that? would love to go to one. Oh, I want to go to one. You just yeah. break stuff. Yeah, man. I'm you gonna go to one for a somewhere. birthday party. That's oh, awesome. Please let us know That's how. That's a it great is. birthday yeah. party. Yeah. That's a great idea. I yeah. will. There's one in. Yeah, there's one in Nashville. She's doing it for her birthday. Um, yeah, we're just she's she's like bring a bunch of glass you want to smash. <laughs> yes. Oh, smashing glass is yeah. so awesome. Yeah. I oh my god, I like, I I was this is back in Brooklyn and uh, I I, I basically made my own rage room is what happened. <laughs> oh, I was actually. Yeah. So oh my god. My, yeah. So we do you in, stuff? Like my my ex girlfriend and I were having one of these fights that just like went on for hours because we were with people, mm-hmm. and her friend started the whole fight. Oh my Ooh. god! I'll tell you this whole story. Yeah. You know, because yeah, I was do. right. I mean, now we're in it. You know, now we're in it. Yeah. All right. So here's here's how it starts, and out then I'll tell you how it ends. So they were borrowing. This couple wanted to borrow my car. And no one told me that it was for a surprise for one of the members of this couple. And so I just said, hey, unfortunately, you can't like we're all hanging out. And I just said, hey, unfortunately, you can't borrow my car. And the the woman, the girl was like, she was like, oh, my God, you almost just ruined everything. Blah, blah. This person comes from an extremely, extremely wealthy family. So things usually fall in line for them. And I just I just said to my my ex, I was like, I didn't know it was a surprise. Sorry, whatever. For some reason, this fight just would not end, and it's just going on all day. And so we were at uh, Roberta's, right at Roberta's in Bushwick. Ah, which pizza. there's a Roberta's here oh, in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. Same Roberta's, funny. <laughs> and I just finally was like, I'm gonna go for a walk. And I just left the bar, and I went, and I went, I found this, uh, 
it was like a um oh, I don't know why I can't think of the word because it's very simple. It's a parking lot. It was a parking structure. Mm-hmm. And I walk and I walk in and there's just like a bunch of random tires and a bunch of random glass bottles. Yes. And just this empty corner of cement. And I look around, I'm like, did someone just set this up for me to just break stuff? Yes. And I stood there for 10 minutes just throwing glass bottles yes. on the wall. And uh it oh I felt so much better. Yeah. So much better. Yes. See so, no one came honestly, running out like Drew, what are you doing? You're you're, no you're one. saying that you're saying that we're supposed to like, oh, just be happy for an hour. I just I think the opposite. Like I think yeah. that like that's no, that doesn't work for me. I'm not yeah. gonna be like, okay, just that I don't know how to do that shit. Like for honestly, for me, what I need to do is, and this was my, one of my favorite things in the world is I, I had these like little kid roommates. They were a couple and they listened to the coolest like desert metal and they would, I'd come home and they'd have it blasted and they would be in the kitchen, like just, just like raging. slamming their heads. Up. Yeah. And I'd come and I'd like slam my head around with them and just like, like dance in the kitchen with them. Or, you know, I used to live across from a single mom who had this like shitty husband that left her and she'd knock on my door and she'd come in my house and scream in my pillows oh, and nice. I'd do well. it and I would do it with her and I'd be like, and we'd yeah. scream in these pillows together and then we'd crack up and like have some chocolate and then she, she, we she'd wouldn't go. even talk and she'd go. That's where I think that we're like human beings and we're animals and there's something going on in the South where we're supposed to be so fucking polite and nice all the time and that's like one part of the human emotion yeah that's one part of the like human expression and existence yeah i was just told my whole life that that's all i can show you know i can't exist that way yeah yeah just buried inside of my you were allowed to be like fuck you fuck you whenever you needed to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like like i find myself even like about to get in fist fights and looking at someone like okay man yeah no I hear you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I used to get in like, it's so funny because I, this like, this part of me has been pretty much buried. I mean, it comes out every once in a while because it's just like, I guess part of my dinner. Like there are times in New York where I'm like looking back and like, like getting on, like getting in like screaming matches on the subway, yeah. like an absolute crazy person, but no one's looking at you like that because they've all done that at yeah, some point or no another. One- yeah, yeah, no one thinks it's weird. My favorite moment is when I had my suitcases, right? And I was on the subway and oh. I had just come from the airport and it was super crowded and this guy kept kicking it. He kept kicking, like kicking my suitcase. And he was like, he's like, go back to where you came from. And I put this, I didn't care, put the suitcase like to the side. I got up as close as I could to his face. And I was like, what makes you think that I'm not from here, number one? And what makes you think that I'm not so fucking crazy? Like, that I want to eat, like, eat your face right now or stab Bite you in the fucking all. neck. Like, yeah. what makes you think that yeah. I'm not yeah. from here? And I, and he was terrified of me and it felt great. And it was yeah. this wonderful moment of just <laughs> like, great. this person being angry, me being angry. And yeah. we were like, I fucking hate you. And then we went about our days. Uh, yeah. And nobody thought there was anything wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. You will never see that in the yeah. South unless it's two people from up North argue. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, there's no. something, I love it here. There's something great about being amongst all this, like, you know, Southern hospitality, but yeah. I don't know if it's healthy to be so fucking polite all the time. I mean, as you can see, Sorry. It's, not. Yeah. It, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> as you yeah. can see what and we do behind closed doors. And I don't know the government. <laughs> we're, we're not okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's also people's expression of looking at you when you're like, you know, I'll forget something on my grocery list and I'll be like, damn it. And the looks I'll get just from right. a little. Yeah. Control your emotions, been, please. Like, yes it's this constant reminder to be like no 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 yeah 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 calm down it's gonna be okay and you're like it's not gonna be okay every time some southern lady in an apron pops up like we don't do that around here honey (laughs) bless your heart 
bless your heart but the truth is is like it's not like it's not going to be okay the thing is is that it is okay and what i'm doing is okay yeah. your reaction to what i'm doing is what's wrong yeah yeah i'm not bothering you i have nothing to do with your life did i turn you in cussing you no yeah. i just said it like, yeah so i'm trying to just pickle some okra today and i fucking god damn didn't get enough white vinegar and i'm fucking gotta go back to aldi for the fifth fucking time today like yeah yeah yeah. And then that needs to be okay. Why is that not okay to be mad about that? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're right. A healthy, yeah. healthy expression. A healthy expression. Yeah. It's, look <laughs> at look for, at this. Thanks for like listening to my rage. I don't know. No, this no, is we'll... this is definitely one of the more rage filled uh episodes we've done, but, but I in think the, it's the best like, way possible. The timing couldn't yeah. have been better. Yeah. <laughs> because like I literally before we started recording, I was like, I need to scream when this uh-huh. is done. <laughs> See, I, I told you you were gonna feel better about this. Come on, look at that. I called I'm just, it. Yeah, you're oh. then, now, now look, I got yeah, hot. I got here here's for here's Will to get mad at me again because we can tie it all up. Like, oh, what look at you doing? talking about getting your emotions out in a in a nice way. Just like your show never sent where people can get out things they never got to say to people. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. It's true. That is what people do. It's that awesome. Was, that was a good one, Drew. That, that was pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay. So more about the show. What was, what was um, the best? This... What, like, tell us like yeah. top, like your favorite mom- moment that you've gotten out of the show so far. My favorite moment. Yeah, like with so like someone went on stage and delivered something. Oh something. my god. There's a few of them. There's a few of them. But one the very first thing that comes to my mind um is um so I do a call out to the audience mm-hmm. and I say, because it isn't the whole thing isn't people just like coming up to a microphone unplanned. It is something that I like to workshop and curate as little as possible so that it's just people authentically saying what they're saying but there's a little bit of preparation beforehand but it's still something that like is shared between only me and this person blah 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 but I always like to have the audience because you know every time we're there in intermission or afterwards people are like I have this thing that I really wanted to say so I started to do this thing where I said who has something that they've never said before and there was this woman there. Um, I'm gonna say her name wrong, but it's like I think it's Kyla. And um, she, I did a call out. I said, "Does anybody have anything that they've never sent?" And there's always this pause. I'm sure you guys experience things sure. like this. There's always this pause. And then in the very back, um, she shot up her hand and she goes up to the mic and she starts shaking. And she closes her eyes and she's like, I'm not going to be able to do this with my eyes open. So I'm just going to close my eyes. And she's like, I want to read a letter to my body because I've hated it for so long. Oh, wow. She's like, I've had so much self-hatred body for so long and I'm an influencer and I make all this money off of body positivity and I feel like a scam artist oh whoa. wow <laughs> yeah oh, I'm just, okay and yeah sure yeah keep going okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right again so she closes I yeah she closes her eyes and she's just like i'm so fucking sorry for like what i say to you every single morning what do i what i say to you when i'm in the shower what do i say to you, what i say to you when i look in the mirror oh, like and i want to thank you for like fucking getting me through the surgeries i've had to go through i want to thank you for you know being strong enough to deal with heartbreak i want to thank you for you know um this 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 and she the whole room is crying yeah. like everyone <laughs> is just me right in now. tears yeah it was one of the sweetest, most beautiful things I've ever heard in my life. Oh, that's awesome. And it was, it was right in front of me and it was so real. That's and so I organic. went up to them. 
yeah and i went up to the microphone and i was just like (laughs) Like, (laughs) yeah Yeah. i hate my body too you know like and it was it was fucking gorgeous and she is you know afterwards i looked at her and she has the like crazy insane numbers she's this big influencer she just went to the show by herself and then honest and then you know a year goes by um and she shows up my door one day and she's like you always have this shitty mic here's a microphone a <laughs> microphone stand for your show oh like, that's so, thanks oh for oh, man. yeah that is awesome wow. yeah fantastic yeah yeah there's just been the most beautiful and that's why I love this thing so much because it's the antithesis of what I came from and what I was turning into yeah and I still got it like I still got that ego and that like need for validation and like to (laughs) what are you talking about we don't don't know what you're talking about showbiz yeah (laughs) what what ego huh no uh-uh you know that's so funny you say that drew because i really don't think you have an ego that's like, I, that's how like, good i keep it in wraps <laughs> yeah do you, yeah and it's funny because like oh. like like i really don't think you have an ego but then i will there are moments where you'll just say something and it throws me off so when, when you're just like yeah i'm just gonna go burn them and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> like that competitive side of you just slips out and you yeah. just say it very casually like, i just, yeah, just moved there i'm gonna burn them and then i'm gonna walk away and i'm like yeah i just moved that competitive spirit from sports because my body completely broke down mm. over to comedy so yeah it's it's yeah. there yeah for sure is but that why that guys is... like sports is that why <laughs> no my dad told me to that's why works? i like sports yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's the one thing my the, dad and i have in common <laughs> i was born with that i need to go up against another human being and be better than them <laughs> at something yeah. at all times yeah yeah it's pretty and that's and but isn't that just isn't that just life drew isn't that just life yeah if anything I, do? I don't know i've never understood it i've ne- it's a gender thing that i really don't get like i don't know I, I, I don't understand oh, uh, yeah. sports. I try so hard to. It's just one. It's you know how we all have our thing that we just fall in love with, and sports was just mine. Yeah. You know, like I, I didn't care about school. I didn't care about reading books. I never cared mm. about like movies. You know, I wasn't no, like mm-hmm. a movie watcher or anything like that. I just, I wanted to be outside shooting basketball or hitting a baseball off a tee or kicking a soccer ball into a goal. Like I, but- I had to be doing something. I guess there's some parallel to like someone says about comedy and I agree with them is like most people you meet in stand up, you would not be friends with if you didn't have that one common trait, which is the act of doing stand up comedy. So maybe for like young men, sports is that kind of thing where yeah. it's like it's something that just like you don't have to you don't have to talk. You can just play sports. And that's oh, the yeah, to to. I mean, well, because I, mean, I think there's a lot of that because believe it or not, I was a very quiet kid growing up. And I played on the freshman baseball team at my high school. And there was two kids. One of them turned into a lifelong friend. And I still talked to him. I actually talked to him uh, earlier this morning. But they made me say 10 oh. words a day. Like, they would keep count. Like, Drew hadn't said 10. Drew hadn't said his 10 words today. Like, they would make me say it. Because oh, I would just it. go in and, like, do my thing and be in my own little world. And they made me, like, they pulled me out of my shell. So, like, if anything, they're to blame for this comedy career pulled me out of my shell too far <laughs> wow <laughs> this is really just becoming quite the episode right this is a great episode <laughs> i thoroughly enjoyed it that's so about, sweet uh, what oh, good friends right <laughs> what were you guys talking about this morning uh <laughs> sports <laughs> <laughs> our our uh, soccer team uh played this morning and uh one, oh, of, one of our players got a red card and now he's banned for four games and that's upsetting it also happens yeah, to be not... will's team too so we're all in it together it's i i don't watch that's the only thing i watch is, is manchester united and yeah. it's like the one thing i look forward to and then that happened at least they didn't lose just today just like, that's today. all that matters you know they didn't win but they didn't lose yeah they didn't lose seven nothing you know yeah oh well, that's right yeah Anyway, sports. sorry. I, sports ball. We di- we digress. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, uh, I mean I I under, I I I I get it. I 
I get it because I get boxing. I like really fucking understand boxing and I love boxing. I don't I'm know. Big fan. I like it all. I, like it all. I caught myself watching it. Cool. I was like, Ugh. What yeah, hopefully the polls don't ruin it. <laughs> yeah. You caught yourself watching golf, you yeah. said? <laughs> yeah, I'm getting into that age. Getting into that age. Oh. I watched it oh, for like five God, minutes. Drew. Calm down. Calm down. I realized what yeah, I was doing. Yeah, because you slept for the remaining realized... 45 after that. event. <laughs> I, did, I did take it out. It was great. I got yeah, just enough I white trash in that. me that I can turn on a NASCAR race and like watch a little bit of it and then fall asleep and then wake back up and watch like the end of it. The vroom, vroom in the yeah. background just oh, man, lulls you to sleep. Perfect noise, yeah. Just uh, and all the commentators mm. talk yeah. like me. You know, they're just like, "Hey, and he's going around the corner, another left turn, and they're making now another turn, quarter four. and there's another turn." So it just lulls you to sleep. It was fantastic. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. Uh, so ridiculous. Uh, well, Allie, anything else you want to touch on real quick before we uh, work it? Um, first of all, where can they find you? Where can they? Where can people that want to? Uh, Check out your shows, get involved, uh, potentially march with you if that is uh, becomes a thing. So uh, yeah, where can they, where can they get involved and and follow you? They can uh, get involved and follow me uh, on. I don't know. I've never done this like plug thing. Um, truly, this is my first. <laughs> Look at that. See, this is a, um, an, an epic we, episode. Yeah. We do tend to have like a lot of firsts for certain things. Yeah, exclusive, exclusive. Falling in love. I was exclusive. always like behind things and telling people to to be yeah. brave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I guess uh, Ragana Creative, my uh, the website, and it's Ragana R A G A N A Creative dot com, and then um, my Instagram. Ali Stu, A L I E, A L I E S T. You just forget how to spell your name. E W. <laughs> well, because everyone spells Ali. Yeah, four hundred thousand different ways. It's yeah. like yeah. two L's and a Y or two, I E. Uh, or, it's, yeah, yeah. Oh. It's basically like a lie. Do. a lie um, we're on to you yeah <laughs> my uh, word uh word always whenever i sign my name it always like in an email i'll write a whole email and then it'll be like dash a lie <laughs> <laughs> don't believe anything i just said <laughs> or it'll say alien yeah there you go yeah thanks thanks drew thanks for giving me that moment of course it really came together there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, both of y'all go to uh, go make up a, a, a rage room so y'all can go uh, get your, your rage out for the day. You know, go break some glass. Okay. Thank you. you know, so yeah. I'm going to, I'm not going to break any glass in here, but uh, I will find something to break. There you go. Well, that's one of my favorite, favorite things to do in Nashville is because they don't, Recycled glass is taking all my glass in a big bucket and going to the recycling thing and bottle by bottle, just like yeah. slamming it. Oh, that's nice. There's and idea. you're saving the environment too. Look at that, killing two yes. birds. Yes, and one you're saving the environment. My brother told me that of all the things to recycle, glass is the one that we don't have to worry about too much because it does eventually, you know, break down back into sand essentially. Ah. But, um, yeah, so. It's it does suck that we don't that recycle us, right? glass, plastic but yeah, it's yes. more the plastic and the aluminum is more important. In the, yeah. Does your brother know what he's talking about? He's yeah, scientist. he's a scientist. He's a, he's yeah, so he's a smart cool. kid. He's one of and smart now kids. he's dad's favorite. <clears throat> I thought he had a, I thought they had a tumultuous relationship. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't talk to anybody anymore. <laughs> as, as the Abel's turn. Yeah. As Abel's turn. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> that's uh -huh. good i like that one all right well Will, where can they find you at coming up what you got who are you going to be kicking out of your show well we got a little special coming up don't we oh we do we got a little a little taping happening on march 23rd at the five spot and i will be recording my hour yeah. slash having a full-on mental breakdown yes but yes, no yes. it's uh 
I'm extremely, I'm, I'm excited. It's come together. It has been years in the making. It's not on Zoom. It's not being recorded on my phone. There's going to hopefully be people there. Yes. That Wouldn't that be some shit if like everything comes together, but there's no people. Uh, and it's just me talking to, you know, I don't know, Laura, I guess the whole time. <laughs> um, but I got that on March 23rd. So if you want to go, tickets are available. They're on my they're on my Insta. You can follow them on Instagram at Will Abel's Comedy. You can go to Dewey Comedy and get tickets there. They're ten dollars or fifteen at the door. But I want your. I want to. I want to know that you're coming. So buy your ticket beforehand. Cool. Okay. Yeah, cool. Drew. What do you got coming up? Uh, well, I've got <clears throat> headlining Cafe Coco next Monday with our buddy. Brady oh, Jerry. yeah. Oh, buddy, that's a fun one. It is yeah. a fun one. Uh, I will be at, I'm, I'm I'm on competing shows. I'm so sorry, Will. I'll be at Zany's, the night of Will's. Yeah, I know party. what you're doing. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But go see Will. Uh, I'll be at the Sunday show in Indianapolis on the 26th. And then I'm going back to the homeland and headlining some shows in Wilmington and also featuring for In Edwards the last weekend in March. Yay. Oh. Stuff. Follow me on Instagram at Laugh with Harrison. Most importantly, Go to Never Sent at uh, at um, Third Coast and what is the other theater that's at? It's none of it's all it's all people cafe and beverage hall. All people cafe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go to those shows. Bring your bring your tissues. Let it all out. Everyone needs a good cry mm-hmm. every now and then. So why not support mm-hmm. people? And get your cry. I'm one of those guys. That's how I, I don't go to rage rooms and things like that. I save it all up and then have a real good cry, and then I'm like good to go. Oh hell yeah! So maybe yeah, I'll, I I, maybe it. my next good cry will be at Never Sent. So I'm excited about that. Um, I hope it, so. I can't wait. I can't. <laughs> I can't. No, I'm, I'm one of those, I, and I look forward to the good cry. Like I get it ready to go, and then it happens. Yeah, and just feel amazing afterwards. It's great. Yeah, it's a lot of both. It's crying and laughing. It's it's an emotional roller coaster. Love it. Sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, make sure you hit that sure. subscribe button. Check out all of Project Nerd's great content. And uh, we will see you next time. Project, you make that.